Have you ever thought about twin spindle, twin turret technology? Well, we're here at WDS Components where they've done just that. Mark, can you tell me a little about yourself and WDS Components? Hi, yeah, thanks, Tom. So I'm the sales and marketing director here at WDS. Um, we're a manufacturer and supplier of small parts, components and machine accessories. Been in the industry for about 70 years. So we're making things, um, nuts, bolts, screws, jig and fixtures, um, a lot of old fashioned traditional engineering components and parts. We also supply um, from stock and we do buy in some bits for OEMs. Our client base is huge and vast and we deal with a lot of the major engineering companies in the UK. There's not really much you don't do. No, um, we've got a lot of skews. Now, we're stood in front of your latest investment. Now, you've gone quite high tech on this with your um, dual spindle, dual turret, live tooling. So what was it that made you go for this sort of technology? Because this is your first machine with this sort of tech. It is, and it was a tough decision for us, but we went to the market. A couple of key factors for us were we wanted to increase our capacity, increase our efficiency, and also look at some of the uh, parts and components that were made on other machines to bring it all into the one machine. And this is an ideal unit for that. So are these some of the top benefits you've seen since having this machine? Absolutely, I and mean, we've reduced our setup times. Um, it's given us some of the efficiencies. We're still getting used to it. We're bringing in sister tooling shortly as well, so that'll help. One of the big things for us is the uh, lights off, so we can set the machine up, run it overnight, come back, stick the stock into stock and ship it to a customer. Now, it's great that this machine's been so helpful for you, but how was, this, how was the install on this machine? Was it how quick were you up and running when this machine got delivered? Well, our production manager at the time set himself a bit of a challenge. Um, and believe it or not, this arrived on the truck and within about three days, we had a shoulder boat in our hands. Um, so it was, uh, it was a good team effort. The guys at Citizen were very helpful. And um, our guys in there, they helped us with some of the programming. But yeah, about three days, we had something in our hands, just over a week, and it was running the production line. Oh, that's, it's great to hear that only three days interruption between now I actually have a part in my hand I want to talk to you about because this looks unreal to say it was done completely off this machine now you did this part as a giveaway and you actually just wanted a basic bottle opener now engineers being engineers like to overthink things now I'm gonna give this to you so could you explain what actually happened sure. when you gave this part to your engineers sure so we wanted a giveaway at the trade shows that we attend. And um, I'm sure everybody knows giveaways are quite expensive. So I thought we have a cost effective way. So when I looked at what we were producing and the shoulder boats we had, I kind of looked at that and being from sales and marketing, I went, it looks a little bit like a bottle opener. So have a drink on us. Can we do something with the end and just flatten it? So it's a bottle opener. But as you said, of course, you could chuck an engineer and a CAD technician in a room and then we ended up with this um, which is considerably different but it is actually a fantastic showpiece so all joking aside it does show what our machines can do so that machine was fed and that whole working including our engraving so our logo our phone number and website are all done on that machine and it produced it this is out of aluminium but it's been a fantastic opportunity and a bit of a laugh to say to people have a drink but yeah, it was a, it was a very over-engineered, but still cheaper than buying a personalised gift, let me tell you. Now, you actually came up with, you actually said uh, before that, even the people thought you did the engraving afterwards, but you did absolutely everything on this machine, didn't you, from that entire part? Yeah, we did. And it, you know, the, it's funny, because when you do these trade shows, people want to know and have some confidence in what you can do and what your ability is. More often than not, some of the engineers come to you with problems that is not a standard part. So having done this and shown them, but yeah, they, they instantly thought we'd engraved it afterwards, which I suppose I get, but when you explain it was all done on the machine, it just reinforced not only our ability, but the, the ability of the machine to deliver the goods. Now, something I've got to ask is, did you use the simultaneous machining on this machine to, to do them parts? We did. See, so that, I think that's brilliant. How you just load a bar, set it going, all your parts out the other side, no need to best about at all. I think that's brilliant. Yeah. And also on this machine, I can see behind you, you've got a Mitsubishi control on here. Was that sort of a tactical decision from the controls you have on your other Citizen machines? 
yeah, it was the, the guys are used to those machines. Um, the guys are used to that programming. It gave us consistency, helps us just roll onto the new machine with everything that we've already got. A little bit of tweaking and updating on some of the the, uh, the joins and the uh, programs, but it made it the whole transition a lot more simple for us in doing it. And then we've got transferability between the machines. I've got a question for you here because I've never I've never run a machine like this, but and other people will probably look at this machine with its dual turret, dual spindle, live tooling. How would you program a machine like this? A lot of years of practice. <laughs> Thankfully, I don't. Our guys will program offline, um, and then they store a lot of them on here. So this machine's got quite a vast memory, which is ideal for us. We have a lot of SKUs, a lot of production, so we're not producing the same thing over and over again. We'll change possibly through the day, certainly several times during the week. So having everything stored on here and, and tweaked on this machine allows the guys a much faster turnaround. Yeah, we were talking to your programmer before this interview, and I couldn't believe that this machine had got such a big memory that they can program and they can leave every single program on that machine. So if you're doing two, three different parts in a day, he was saying within 40 minutes an hour, the machine's completely changed over, which for a machine like this, I think it's brilliant. So overall, are you happy that you took the plunge in getting a machine with all this technology? Absolutely. Um, we're still yet to see the benefits though, Tom, as I said before, but as we start to get better and more experience with the machine, we can try and see what else it can do. But as a, as a manufacturer of many, many items and many, many SKUs, sometimes low volumes, that ability to change and reset up and restart another job very quickly is really important because if the machine's not running, it isn't producing. If it's not producing, we're not earning anything of it. So the quicker we can get that machine churned around, so much better for us. So we've seen an increase um, in our efficiency. It gives us much more capacity as well. So hopefully this can help us grow and meet the demands of our customers.